we're going to look at long multiplication. And long multiplication just means we're multiplying not by a single digit anymore but by two or more digits. So I'm going to take a calculation we probably know the answer to. 12 times 12. If we've learnt our tables that's as high as it goes. So we can see what happens in this method. I'm going to write out my calculation. 12 multiplied by 12. So to start, it's just like we would do with column multiplication when we're multiplying by one digit. We would start with our units. And to make this easier, I'm just going to use a counter to cover up this tens digit because for the moment we don't need to worry about that digit. So we can use our method to say 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 and 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. So we've multiplied both these digits by the 2 as we would in our column method. Now what we need to do is we need to multiply by the tens digit. So I've finished multiplying by the units digit. I'm going to put the counter on to cover it up. We don't need to worry about that one anymore. And I'm just going to multiply again now by the tens digit. But I'm starting in the tens column, which means I need to start my answer in the tens column. So what I need to do before I do anything else is put a placeholder in the units. So the counter here is reminding me, I've done the units, I need a placeholder. And now I can multiply by the tens digit. 1 multiplied by 2 is 2, and 1 multiplied by 1 is 1. And we can see that effectively what we did here is 10 multiplied by 12. And we can see that was 120. I can get rid of that counter now. Okay, so now I've got two answers. I've got the answer from multiplying the units and the answer from multiplying the tens. And all I need to do is add them together. So it's column addition. 4 add 0 is 4. 2 add 2 is 4. 1 add nothing is 1. So my answer, as we expected, is 144. Let's look at a slightly trickier calculation. 36 multiplied by 304. Now remembering that it doesn't matter which way around we write these numbers, we're going to write the longer number first. 304. And underneath 36, and I'm going to remember to line up my tens and units just to make it easier. So I can easily see my units, tens and hundreds columns. So I'm going to use my counter again to cover up the tens because I don't need to worry about them first. And I'm going to multiply this number by my units. 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. So I'm going to write the 4. And I'm, I've got the 2 of 20 that I need to carry in here. But what I'm going to do is write it down small at the top. And we need to make sure we keep it smaller than the other digits, otherwise we're going to get quite muddled. So 6 multiplied by 4, I can see, is 24. 6 multiplied by 0. If we multiply by 0, we know the answer is always 0. 6 times 0 is 0. And I need to add on my 2. So I've got 2 in my tens column. And then 6 multiplied by 3 is 18. So I can put the 8 in my hundreds. And I can write the 1 straight into the thousands because I don't have anything else left to do. So there's the first line of my calculation finished. And now I'm going to move the counter. I've multiplied by the units. I'm going to multiply by the tens. 
I've got to remember first of all, here's my reminder, I'm not looking at units anymore. So there's my placeholder and my answer is going to be starting in the tens because I'm multiplying by tens. 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. So again I'm going to write my 12 in here, carrying my 1 into the next column, keeping it quite small. 3 multiplied by 0, we know that's 0. Add on the 1 is 1. And then finally 3 multiplied by 3 is 9. Now I need to just add those two numbers together. And we can see the importance of keeping these numbers small, these digits, and when we've added them on crossing them out, because now we're going to add up and we don't want to accidentally add one of these numbers by mistake. So 4 add 0 is 4, 2 add 2 is 4, 8 add 1 is 9, and 1 add 9 is 10. So there's my answer, 10,944.